Welcome to Let's Learn Machinki. All right, welcome back to part two of our first playthrough of Machinki. And we uh, let me do a quick review of what we did in part one, just to get us all on the same page. We basically focused on the green tokens, and we set up a strong economy by setting up loops uh, running between our first two cities, Colorado Springs and San Antonio. Then we expanded out to Oklahoma City and Portland. And then we expanded further, uh, aligned Tucson to Los Angeles. And we're running all these as uh, direct um, groups of two kind of cities. So in other words, Colorado Springs is feeding San uh, where was I? Colorado Springs is feeding at San Antonio and vice versa. Oklahoma City is feeding Portland and vice versa. And L.A. and Tucson are, are working together. And we've got them all in closed loops going back and forth together. I told you that the, I had uh, noticed a mistake on my setup. Where was that? Uh, oh, yeah, down here. Um, I, fi I went back in and fixed this uh, already. Um, I had the wrong... Um, signal direction on this one. I had it pointing out this way and it should have been pointing back to the uh, depot. And remember, I were, uh, one of the things I'm trying to do is run everything as a one-way uh, track except for some of the track around the depot itself. So that's um, kind of catching us up on where we are. And now we're ready to move into uh, kind of the second phase, our, our uh, timber and coal tokens. But before we do, I wanted to um, give you some feedback and, and make some changes. Uh, I got uh, some great comments from, um, I cannot say the name, I'm going to spell it first, M-R-O-T-S-A-L-A-P-3-X. Maratsalap, maybe. I, I, I don't know. I do not know. <laughs> but at any rate, uh, Maratsalap, whoever you are, thank you for your comments. Um, he or she, I think it's he. No, I think it's he because I, I actually saw a video that you had done. So Maratsalap, he um, pointed out that he did not think it was a good idea to have a counterclockwise loop joining a clockwise loop. And I have thought this over. And he also pointed out that this right here is a potential bottleneck because we've got a lot going on. We've got stuff coming here. We've got stuff going this way, stuff coming out. And it's in a tight area. And I looked that over and said, amen, brother, you are correct. So we're going to fix that right now. And one of the good things about having a good economy where we build our money up so we can do things, we can fix our mistakes. So. First thing we're going to do is get rid of these connections like so. And if you remember, I kind of did it. I said, uh, think about the way that the, um, let's get rid of those for now. Okay, the way the train is going to come, whoops, the train is going to come into, uh, you know, to load into your, um, loop at the first point. I think a more important consideration is probably, just to keep it simple, have everything go in the same direction. So we've got a counterclockwise line coming this way. And we built this one as a clockwise. So I'm going to turn this whole thing around. We're going to flip this around and make it a counterclockwise loop as well. So we're just going to all the little um, signals we've set up so far, and it's not very many, we haven't done a lot with them, we're going to just flip them around, make them go the other way. And then we're going to take our train, and we'll have to start this, ah, shoot, start this, stop him, reverse him, and start him again. Now, now we've got a counterclockwise line running. And that way, we can now build maybe a little more intelligent intersection here. So we still want to be able to come into this loop and out of this loop. So we're going to go out of this loop. I think the best way would be to just go out like so. So uh, let's get rid of this for a minute. Well, let's just get rid of this little signal because it's kind of in our way. And let's go out of our loop like so. That will allow us to get back out of the loop, and let's come into the loop like this. Now, 
we're going to come out of this loop and go in back into this loop in a little more organized way. And I actually could have come over here even and, and made that connection. I want to do it a little tighter because we may end up doing something where we need to kind of go like this, circle around Los Angeles down the, down the road. And um, Marat Salap, or however you say it, uh, pointed out that, you know, he asked me, did I care about this uh, traffic? Now, when I first made this, I was thinking, well, this is just how I'm going to get some trains into the loop with the um, from the um, depot, but I, I, that was wrong. I was poor thinking on my part because we may need to move stuff into L.A. We may need to set up separate lines. We may need to run goods into L.A. or Portland or whatever, and this right here is a little more spread out. It gives some space for a train to come in here, a train to come in here. It, it'll be a much cleaner way to get trains in and out, out of our, our um, uh, loops. So, uh, and, and even this might be, might, it might be better if I actually took it out. You know what? It would be. Let's just, let's just bite the bullet here. Let's just take this guy out even a little further like so so he's going to join join the dance uh, out there all right so we made an intersection so let's put in some signals did not mean to make that one. I didn't I don't need those two okay I do need one out here to let let this move out of the way okay so here we go that's better put a signal here put one out here to let trains get out of the way maybe one here Okay, now we should have a lot better flow. And, and by the way, if we decided we wanted to do something like Portland to uh, LA, now all we have to do is, is swing in through here and then maybe may build a loop right here to allow turning into Portland. So that, this, is, this is much better, much cleaner. And it probably prompts us to have kind of a basic rule um, I guess we'll call it the Maratzalap rule, that um, you uh, your next loop needs to be going either the same direction as the one it's, it's going to attach to. That's probably an excellent rule. And, and not a rule, a guideline, because there could be exceptions. And by the way, I still say you could very safely connect a counterclockwise and a clockwise loop, but you'd have to be careful about it and not build the little traffic jam, potential uh, traffic uh uh, tie up that I had built right there. Okay, so we fixed that. We should be good. Let me run it for a second just to make sure I haven't messed something up. Make sure these trains are all working. By the way, we're up to two trains on this on this track because we've got plenty of traffic. But you notice they're not both completely full, so you know we certainly don't need any more trains. Over here we've got a full train and a partially full train, so we really don't need more trains yet. Here we've just got a partial train, so we, we are in good shape on our trains on our passenger routes. So everything seems to be working now with the fixes. So now we're better off. Now, now we're going to move into our next phase. By the way, I turned the system sound back on. I realized I'd had them turned off, and I wish they could do something about this sound. Hear that? That's supposed to be the high wind blowing, but I personally find it irritating. I'd love to be able to turn that one off and keep uh, you know maybe the engine sounds because if we get down here closer i think i've got the sounds turned on so we can hear them there we go when you get down close you start hearing hearing the sounds of the engine and stuff um i'm not <laughs> if you haven't figured it out yet i'm not totally into the sounds uh, i can do without them i'm not playing the music either uh, it's interesting i like jazz music but if i'm going to play the music i'm probably going to get my own jazz tracks and, and play them but anyway now what we want to do now is start into our uh getting our timber set up and i like to kind of work backwards the way the supply chain works is logs going to the sawmill then going to the tool works and I want to work backwards and I want to take advantage of the fact that these two are very close together and I'm also going to take advantage of another fact that's easy to forget you do not have to build your station 
right next to whatever it is you need to pick up. These stations can expand, like uh, for example, look at the catchment area of our station here in San Antonio because of these platforms and because of the waiting set uh, room that we have and look how much room we have. So I did a little calculation to figure out how this would work and I believe pretty, uh, I'm pretty confident that if I count up eight, I won't even need a waiting room. I can go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I think that's eight. Let me see. They're hard to count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yes, that should be good. So what I want to, what I'm planning on doing here, is setting up three platforms at to service the toolworks, and the one of them is going to be to bring in the one of them is going to be dedicated to bringing in the lumber, the planks. One of them is going to be dedicated to bringing in the coal. And the third one is actually going to be in reserve for later on when we know we're going to be doing other things with our tours. So we're looking ahead to future stages. And now what we can do is, if we go out and leave a space of exactly four and put in our platforms for the sawmill. Now that four is the minimum amount of room you need to do a 180 degree turn like this. So I can have a nice tight loop that's going to connect those two stations. Very short run, should be very efficient. Now, um, now you both probably notice though, of course, neither one of these, these two stations are out there in the middle of nowhere. So all we have to do now is throw in some Throw in a platform. Did I get the right one? Platform. Two, three. If I add three platforms now, I've got got my tool works in my catchment area for the um, station. And I can go back here on this other one. And by the way, if you haven't noticed it, these uh, extensions are specific to the station you're working with. So you have to, you yeah, can't, Op use the platform from the other station to build it over here. Okay, so if I go out like that, now I've got my sawmill in the catchment area for this one. So now these two will work, and I've got a line set up to run from the sawmill to the um, tools and back. And now we can run a line in and start feeding our logs. And the other reason I like to have a really strong economy is that when I do the build, I like to be able to do the whole build, not just piecemeal. In other words, I don't want to just build a line that runs from here to here with a single platform and, and try to f look ahead to figure out what, about, what do I have to do after that. I'm just not that smart. Uh, so what I like to, to be able to do is have enough funds that I can actually build this right off the bat like so just build the whole thing that I need just making sure that I leave enough space for expansion of this uh, as we build extensions into um, into this logging site and we're not going to get into that in this episode that'll come up in our next episode so what I want to do is be able to send two whoops I want to be able to send two um, <laughs> sorry it's hard for me to build and talk at the same time logs from two sites into my um, into um, the sawmill for now and we'll expand that later and I want to be able to say, go around this dude and come back like so. Okay, so now we've got the potential for logs to come in from two forests into our sawmill. We've got the potential for this, this, the uh, lumber to be taken back from the sawmill to the tool works. And we've got 1,800, we've got plenty of money, so let's in fact, I probably should have this running while I'm doing this. 
There's really no reason not to. Although I don't want to run it too fast. Okay. So now I want to have a line like this. A second loop. Okay. And the idea of this one is I'm going to run out of my sawmill or coal mine. And I'm going to run my coal mine like so. And since we've got nice flat space, let's just go ahead and flatten this out. So I'm going to go three wide down through there. That'll give me a nice little gap in the middle. Run this dude in here and connect him in like so. So now we've got a loop for our coal to come in to actually to either one. Because uh, we may want to, there is eventually a, a reason to ship coal and uh, lumber back and forth, but we can actually do the coal a different way. Anyway, I'm, I'm ahead of myself. So now we've got coal coming into our tools and returning actually through this middle platform, which right now is just a pass through, but through the middle platform and back to do its thing. We've got two sets of lumber coming in. We've got that coming in. So now all we have to do is make sure that we can get from our, <clears throat> our uh, depot to these lines. So I'm going to run the, I can run a depot line up here and connect in. That'll give me the logs. I could run this one over and connect in somewhere, and I'd rather do it back here kind of away. So first of all, let's set our direction. We want more counterclockwise, don't we? I think we do. So let's run everything counterclockwise. So let me just mark this so I'll know which way we're going. Come in like this, so you'd be going that way. You have to forgive me, I'm a little um, spatial relations and propitiation and where I am in space are not my strong suit, so I have to sit here and think about this a little bit. Okay, so we're going around like this. Over here we would be going around like that. Okay. Section, so let's put in some signals. Okay, looking good. A whole bunch of lines now. What's missing? Our connection to the depot. Ooh, I think the easiest thing to do here would be to run a line like so and connect it up with... Oh, that reminds me. I want one other thing too. I do want the ability to bypass this station if you need to. Okay. And where was I? Here we go. Let's come out like so. 
and we'll just join up the fun like this and we'll have the ability to come off and go right back so this little piece of track will be two-way and we'll be going one way up here and here and we've got it whoops and if we keep following our little rule of every time we have them diverging a place to diverge or an intersection we put in a signal down here would probably be more consistent if we did it like ah, like that okay so that takes care of getting the lumber trains out now to get our um, coal and um, coal and um, tools it'll be a simple matter of connecting in I'd rather connect kind of away from all that looping but it's not a big deal like so That'll get you on, and now we need to get you off. And that'll get you off. Okay. And the only thing we're missing is the ability to get onto this inner track right here. So all we need is any any little connection will do. We can put it anywhere between these two so that they connect up. And it will only be used to move our tool delivery um, from the um, coal line over to, to the, um, this line, the, the inner loop. And we'll put a signal here because we don't want this lane and this lane to influence each other in terms of are we open ahead. So that should do it. That should be, uh, we should be able to load trains all over the place now. Let's just find out. So let's haul lumber. Five point eight six will fit. We'll give it orders to go up here, get a full load, and go here and go. So go up to this one, get a full load, and drop off here. Now those were easy because they only have one way to get in here. No, I didn't want that. All right, let's hurry up and leave on. Okay, there we go. So now we've got our two um, lumber trains going. Let's set up our coal train. <laughs> Talk about jazz references. See how many of you got that. Okay, nice big coal train, and we will start it. What in the world? It thinks I want to delete it. <laughs> How did that happen? You go there. Run full. 
And I want you to come in. We're just going to be very careful about this one. Come in to set a waypoint here. That's how you do waypoints. You just check. You just click on the track where you want it. And when you come out, I want you to always run on this line over here. There we go. So, go. That should give us a coal train. And let's set up our um, train between the lumber mill and the tools. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, we seem to have died. Okay, one thing, uh, being an alpha build, it does crash up on occasion. When I first got the game, it's been a month or so, I guess, uh, it crashed pretty often. I've noticed it crashing way less now, but it still does. It does have these autosaves, so let's load the autosave and see if we uh, lost too much work. We shouldn't have lost much. Okay. Let's see, where are we? All right, pause it for a second. Let's see where we are. We've got... Looks like we've got our two timber trains. I think we have a coal train coming out, yes. And... Let's make sure it works properly. Make sure it runs the right route before we throw this other one out there. Perfect, 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 okay. And let's do one more. We'll do our planks. And we're going to tell it to go to this station, get a full load, go to here, go to this station, go to here. And in fact, and I can tell you what I've, I've seen from experience, and we'll pause this for a second. If I start this right now, it will take the quickest route it can find to get to that station. And it will probably run right around, right through the coal line. So I'm going to move this command that says for it to go to that one right there. I'm going to have that as the, as its first target. So go there first, then go to the station, and it should go straight to where I need it. Let's just see if that works. Yeah, good deal. Good deal, Lucille. All right, and the reason I was being careful about those two to make sure that the, the this train was always on this track and the coal was always looping around on this uh, second track is because this one's going to be waiting, and I don't want it to hold up anybody else. It's going to wait for full load, but it will not wait very often or very much. It's going to just keep pretty busy here. And you'll see, this is. I think this is going to work pretty well. So let's let this run for a minute. And you can see we've got timber coming into our sawmill being converted into planks. We, we've got coal coming into our tool work, being, uh, giving, which will start giving us as soon as we load up with coal. Um, and wait a minute, the coal may or may not be working correctly. Let's check this out. Okay, Mr. Cole, what's the matter with you? Ah, I left out the station. <laughs> Told him all these great places to go, but I left out the station. Beautiful. 
So between this one and this one, it needs to actually go to a station. Here we go. So he loads up. He has a full load. He's on his way to this waypoint, which will put him on this track, which is actually not a problem now. It's really the only one he would go to. This is a little bit of overkill. He'll go into the station, unload. Here we go. Now we'll start making coal and get coal. I mean, get making coal tokens. So there we go. There we have a basic setup for doing um, our sawmill to our tools, our coal to our tools, our logs to the sawmill in the first place. And now we see, okay, we can collect our, we've already delivered the logs they want us to do. We've already, already set up, we're delivering coal that they want us to. We've done the advances we need to do. We, what do we have? We've, we're running six trains, so we've got that. We've finished that one off. So um, we've got this D4 station. Let's see what this is. This says that we need to deliver a thousand logs from a specific um, logging site. Now let's just let this thing take us to it. Okay, so it's going to want us to come from this logging site right here. So that's not the world's toughest demand because that's already right here next to our network so that one shouldn't be too bad so all we have to do is set it up so that we have a line coming out of this that we can then plug into our um, our existing logging line and I think I'd like to plug it in like from here and then back around to here Okay, so that means the station uh, can be almost anywhere, but this will do. So I want to come down like this. Whoops. Like so. And then I want to go... Back like so. Now that's getting a little cramped there, but I do not see that as a traffic problem. Let's just see what it looks like after we mark it all up here. Coming like that, like so, like so, and that is wrong. <laughs> that is wrong. It's coming in. Shoot, shoot, shoot. So it come in like... Argh. Counter clockwise, which means we want it to actually... Oh, no, this is actually better. We want it to go... Like that. So now it's a counterclockwise loop. It's joining this other counterclockwise loop. It's, the train's going to run like this. Go in, join our little timber delivery system, come back out, and go back to its um, station. So let's, that should work. And let's see how we go here. Could start... Um, could, now, this is another thing we'll work on later on is when do I start using different types of trains? We're sticking with the porter right now, but we'll get into, and I'd love to have your all's feedback on, when do we want to start, uh, you know, spending our timber on Baldwin's, for example, or do we? So we want you to go here, let you go there, get a full load, and go to the sawmill and go and 
and he's going to make a big full loop in order to get back to where, he, where he's starting, but that's fine. By the time he gets back there, he should have a nice load ready to go. So that gets us started on this one. We'll do some more to make sure we get this one. Our timber is going well. Our coal is going very well. So you can see by having a strong economy and be able to do all this building kind of in almost one big fell swoop, we were able to um, very, very quickly do the tasks that lined up for us related to this next phase, the whole lumber phase. There goes our first train from uh, this uh, forest, so we're starting our deforestation. And now we'll watch these trains and see if we you know, need extra trains on a certain line, like if we're getting a whole bunch of timber. And then the next thing we'd want to do is start thinking about how would we want to upgrade these to uh, make, make, do we need more logs, do we need more planks, do we need to upgrade our tool works and all that. We're going to handle that in our next video. So for this one, let's go see what we did. We were able to clean up our little mess down here with the with the uh, directional signal. Thanks to uh, Marat Salap, I apologize for the pronunciation, but thanks to Marat Salap, we were able to clean this up and make this a much smoother, cleaner, more flexible solution that's gonna help us uh, probably, we'll probably even pay more benefits later on. We've got profitable lines running. You can see we're starting to produce timber at a good clip. We're starting to create uh, coal tokens as well from our coal mine feeding into the tool works. So we've got a, we're off to a good start. It tells us to build a depot, so I will. An extension on the depot. So over here, we've got an extension on the depot. And there we go. We've got our extension built. And uh, so we're in very, very good shape here for timber and coal. We're off to a good start in that area. Now, next video, we'll talk about, do we want to use another, another sawmill? Do we want to run even more of this stuff? Uh, do we want to look at expansion of our, um, the, our existing system, or what do we want to do? And we'll keep an eye on our um, passenger traffic and see if we need more trains and what have you, and see if any more city, and eventually more cities will pop up that we can use. So there, we already got our timber reward, good deal. And we got our coal reward, so that was fast. And all that's left is the deforestation, and that's progressing nicely. In fact, we can see here, we've got 154. We could actually put another train on that particular line with no problem. You see we have more trains available now that we built that extension in the uh, depot. But let's just stick with our porters for now. And we also have, this is nice, a bigger, um, this would be nice if we could afford this. This will allow us to haul more logs in one pass. Made us a little too long. So we'll hit info and sell off one of these. 5.32. We could actually put one of these on the end of it and be exactly six. Beautiful. So let's have him copy. I think it's this train. Let's just make sure. No, it isn't. Well, never mind. Go here, get full, go here, go. So you can see he can carry, how many is he carrying? He can carry 51, 51, is that what that says? He can carry 51, we were carrying 41, so we only picked up two in that. Uh, not the world's biggest deal. Anyway, that's where we'll, we'll leave it off. Uh, we've got um, an interesting little uh, system going here to handle our um, lumber and our coal. And uh, we've got our passenger lines humming. So I think we're off to a good start. would love to hear more comments from you. Really appreciate the feedback. Uh, I will say quickly, a bit of Revelations Gaming. I, I got your comments about the uh, passenger lines. I'd like to learn more about uh, what you're thinking in terms of, of these, all these direct connections of all these cities. I'd love to get some more feedback on that before I comment on it or try to adjust uh, the play style uh, to suit that. So uh, keep that in mind and give me some more comments if you would, some more feedback. And everybody, keep those comments coming. We, we all get better when we share. So uh, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope uh, it helps you become a better player. And I hope you'll join us for our next Mashiki video. Thank you.